Hello students, this is your English lesson. And in this lesson, we are going to read unit number 15, the window from Oxford Reading Circle 6. So, we start our lesson. This is page number 137. Do you have a computer at home? Do you get to use one at school? Have you ever sent an email to a friend? In our world today, there are computers everywhere. Millions of people keep in touch with each other through the net by sending emails. They don't write letters anymore. Even if you do not have a computer at home, you can easily pop into a cyber cafe on the street and pay to use a computer for an hour or so. When a message is composed as an email, it can be sent to many different people at the click of a button on the keyboard. The email can go to all your friends at one time and then when your friends receive the email, each one will deal with it in a different way. Some will read it and if they like it, may file it away to read again another day. Some will read the email and delete it straight away. I don't know why I am being sent such rubbish they will say to themselves and some will like what they have received and will want to share it immediately with others they will forward your email to everyone in their address book some email messages are sent out to make others aware of a particular piece of news some emails contain jokes some are simply stories with a message and here is one of them from S. Kozana. Kozana's at the rate of email tree dot com to Brad Patrovery. Brad Patro at the rate of glory bus dot com. Sent Tuesday, September 21st, 2002, 7 4 p.m. Subject the window. Dear Brad. Thought you would like this story, so read on. It made me feel sad, but like the man in the story, I wanted to share it with you because you are a friend and I think about you of quite often. I want you to know I care about you and I am wishing you well. Your loving friend, Sarah. Please let me know if you have any trouble opening the attachment. I shall send it in some other format if you cannot open the file. Peter had a serious problem with his lungs. He was taken to hospital and moved into a small ward and put in a bed by the only window in the room. The doctors said that he would be allowed to sit up in his bed for just one hour each afternoon. This will help to drain the fluid from your lungs, they told him. Make yourself as comfortable as possible. You will enjoy the fresh air coming in from the window. During the night, another patient was admitted to the same ward. He was put in the bed next to Peter's. He had been involved in an accident and had a serious problem with his back. The test would be extensive and he was probably going to be in hospital for quite some while. You must on no account sit up, so don't even try to get out of bed, said the doctors. You are seriously ill and you must lie flat. Your vertebrae need time to heal. The following morning, after the nurses and the doctors had been on their rounds to see the patients, the two men began to talk to each other. What's your name? asked Peter from his bed by the window. At first, the man in the next bed did not reply. He did not know where the question had come from or to whom it was addressed. All he could see was a point 
on the cold white ceiling directly above him. Are you talking to me? He asked after a long pause. Yes, said Peter. I am in the bed next to yours. My name is Peter. I am Joseph, said the other man. You can call me Joe. As the morning drew on, the two men talked and talked. What else was there to do in hospital, especially if you had been told to lie flat on your back all day? The men did not speak about what had brought them into the hospital. They spoke of things beyond the four walls of the world, about their wives and families, their homes and their jobs. They spoke about the interesting places they had visited during their vacations, of things seen and done, and wonderful journeys made in the wide and colorful world outside. The days passed peacefully enough. Each afternoon, Peter was allowed to sit up for an hour. As he did so, a shadow would fall across Joseph's bed. Tell me about the world outside, Joseph would say as he stared at the ceiling. You are by the window, you lucky fellow. There is nothing much happening on the ceiling today, not even a spider or a fly. And Peter would tell him, it is a bright day today. The window overlooks a park with a lovely lake. There are ducks and swans splashing on the water and around the lake there is a lush green lawn surrounded by flower beds. Some children are sailing their model boats on the sparkling water of the lake. Such deep blue, much darker than that of the sky and yet much brighter because of the reflected sunlight. In his mind's eye, Joseph could visualize the bright and cheerful scene outside the window and he felt warm and comfortable inside. Young couples are walking, continued Peter, and now one young man is picking a scarlet rose and handing, handing it to his wife. How many flowers there are and what stunning colors! What lies beyond the park, Peter? Beyond the park? Why, there is a busy street, red buses are rattling along and black and yellow taxis wave in and out of the other cars. They obviously know their way around the city better than the others. And beyond the busy streets, there is a spectacular skyline, old grey buildings and sparkling new glass and metal ones that almost reach the clouds. A church steeple pointing proudly to the heavens, a round dome, more sober, and a tall tower bristling with antenna, perhaps to send and receive signals of some kind, all of them magnificent structures. And then the nurses would come in and say, Now, Peter, it is time to lie down again. Your hour is up. And they would ease him back onto his bed. Joseph began to live for those one-hour sessions when Peter would describe the wonderful world outside. A few more days went by, and life in the hospital ward continued as usual. The nurses would come in, help Peter to sit up and then leave, and Peter would begin his descriptions, a parade passing along the high street, the clouds of all shapes and sizes fleeting across the sky, a spectacular rainbow after a shower of rain, birds getting up to all kinds of tricks and frolicking in the water of the lake interesting people in the park and so much more each day there was a new scene to describe and each day joseph stared at the ceiling or shut his eyes and imagined the scene and slowly very slowly joseph's health improved 
But then one morning, some days later, the nurses did not come to help Peter sit up in bed. He was not there. Joseph feared the worst. Where is Peter? He asked one of the nurses later that morning and she told him the sad news. Peter had died during the night. Joseph was heartbroken. His mornings would not be the same without Peter to help him pass the long hours of the day. The following morning, Joseph asked if he might be moved into the bed by the window. He was feeling much better now and he was getting stronger by the day. He would soon be able to sit up himself and gaze out of the window. In due course, Joseph was moved into the bed by the window. In the afternoon, with a little help from one of the nurses, he was probed up and sitting in bed. He looked out of the window for the first time. All that he could see was the brick wall of the building. Next door, Joseph called for the nurse. Tell me, nurse, said Joseph. When was that ugly wall built outside the window? Years ago, replied the nurse. But that can't be possible, exclaimed Joseph. Only the other day, Peter was describing to me how the falling leaves were forming a yellow and red carpet on the lawns of the park. Peter, said the nurse in surprise. What could pe poor Peter have described to you? He was blind. He could not even see that brick wall, even if he, he would want it to. Joseph eased himself back on his pillows. A large tear trickled down his cheek. Now come to the questions. 1. What is strange about the way in which the email has been written? Why do you think the writer used this style? Answer. The writer has shortened words and used phonetics to write the email. It is quicker to write a message or letter in this way. 2. Why was it not possible for Joseph to see out of the window? Answer. Joseph had been involved in an accident and had injured his spine. He had been advised to lie flat on his back. 3. What kinds of things did Peter describe to Joseph and how did the descriptions made Joseph feel? Answer. Peter described a park and the lake in it. He described the boats sailing on it and happy people walking about. He also described a busy street scene beyond the park. It made Joseph feel very happy. 4. Why do you think Peter invented the descriptions? Answer. Peter wanted to keep Joseph happy as he did not like being led up in bed. Perhaps he was also relieving himself of boredom. 5. What lesson do you learn from the story? Answer. We learn this lesson from this story that if someone is in miserable condition and needs our help, we should do some effort uh, to make him happy and uh, relieve. 6. Had you been in Peter's place, how would you have made Joseph feel better? Answer. I would have played some word games with Joseph to make him feel better. I would also play riddles or sing songs with him to pass the time and have some fun. Seven. Do you think Peter's descriptions would change Joseph's life in the future for the better? Give reasons for your answer. 
आंसर यस हिज अप्रोच टू वर्ड्स लाइफ वुड बी चेंज एज ही वुड थिंक अबाउट लाइफ पॉजिटिवली बी रेफरेंस टू कॉन्टेक्सट रीड दिस लाइन्स फ्रॉम द स्टोरी एंड देन आंसर द क्वेश्चन वन आर यू टॉकिंग टू मी ही आस्कड आफ्टर अ लॉन्ग पॉज ए हु सेज दीज वर्ड्स एंड टू होम आंसर जोजफ टू पीटर बी वॉट क्वेश्चन वॉज आस्कड प्रोर टू दिस आंसर पीटर हैड आस्कड जोजफ वॉट्स योर नेम See where is the speaker at this point and what is he doing answer in a hospital bed forced to lie still on his back because of a spinal injury question 2 but that can't be possible exclaimed joseph a to whom is joseph talking answer the nurse b what is it that he claims could not be possible answer the wall outside his window couldn't have been built years ago see what does joseph go on to say answer the peter had just described the road and the falling leaves in the park to him question 3 who might have said the following and to whom A you are not to get up answer the doctor could have said this to joseph B is it raining answer joseph could have asked peter when he was describing the scene outside C it's turning the corner now answer peter could have said this to joseph when he was describing some vehicle outside d he is feeling much better can i move him answer a nurse could have said this to a doctor about joseph e i never guessed he could not see answer joseph could have said this to the nurse when she told him that peter had been blind c words and meaning What is the plural form of the following? A. Antenna. Antenna. Two. Vertebra. Plural. Vertebrae. Three. Deer. Deer. Four. Son-in-law. Plural. Sons-in-law. Five. Baby. Plural. Babies. Six. Radius. Plural, ready. Seven, larva. Plural, larva. Eight, cargo. Plural, cargoes. Nine, Caesars. Caesars. Thanks for listening. For new videos, don't forget to subscribe my channel. And if you like my videos, please share and like.